Welcome back, everybody. We got three of us in our three-man booth. I'm Dan Salem, Phil, and Bud. Welcome, welcome. The adult of the NFL season are upon us. What's up, guys? Much. Not much. That's what, you got to drink. Keep drinking that caffeine to keep you awake here the uh, last few weeks, huh? I do. I do. We got a. I guess it's big news for Jets fans because we don't have to face them anymore. Rob Gronkowski's retired. Um, maybe. He didn't. Maybe. Well, the maybe part. The maybe part pisses me off that his agent came out and said that immediately following the announcement. But <laughs> he didn't do anything like spectacular for it. I thought he was going to top. top the but other. this is. But this is what these guys do now, right? So. They don't want to do the OTAs. They don't want to do the, you know, the preseason football. They don't want to do all the training. And, you know, if, if, if they're suffering, you know, four weeks in or five weeks in, which is possible, I guess, right? And uh, why not make a phone call to Gronk and see if he's available? I don't know. You think, you think he's going to get any faster in the offseason? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, he's got, he'd have to stay in football shape for that to be a reality. And I thought the whole point of retiring is that you can kind of not stay in football shape. So, Do you think, do you think and, I, and I know that they've already kind of done this, but so he's retired now, right? Right. Monday, Monday, I, don't, I don't know if he's officially filed the papers. I think he's just said he's going to retire. Monday, like, Monday Night Football is looking for new people. Who? Monday oh. Night Football. He'll, he'll, be on, he'll be on NFL Network at worst next season. Like, the, the, think, the, well, he'll, he'll definitely be somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. You, do you think they make that Monday Night Football makes that quick hire? Because they made it with Witten, and that team was obviously not as good as, as uh, the prior instances of those Monday Night Football boots. And now Witten's back, and now Witten's back in the league. It's like they just – you can't hire these guys right away because you don't know if they're any good. Well, you know Gronk could probably stand there and do one-liner jokes. He shouldn't necessarily be thrust into color commentary. <laughs> Right, he'd be like he'd be like the Dennis Miller role. Like, remember when Dennis Miller was in the booth for a season? Like, that would be his role, kind of like you said, the 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 wisecracks and the one-liners. Yeah, the fly on the wall guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, Romo's a special case where he actually is really good at calling the game. That's that's a skill in and of itself. So, well, he's a quarterback. So, I mean, he he knows what he's looking. at. I think that's. I think people give him a little too much credit for that. I mean, well, I think any quarterback can sit there and be like, yeah, well, this is what they're gonna do. No, no, I know we're all on camera right now, but the fact is. He's there. He recognizes it, and he actually can articulate it so that we understand him. I, I, I mean, no, 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 he does. He does a good job. But, but that's it, you know, any quarterbacks. Hey, look, they're playing in cover too. That the, the right play is to go, you know, across the middle, something like that. I'm no quarterback, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I think that the the calling plays by him maybe have been overblown. But I actually think, or as a body of work, he was a very good on camera personality. I was I was impressed with him. All right, so you think he's going to go to the booth next season? Well, what was he not in the booth? No, no, I mean, I mean, he's going to be in, you know, calling games as a, as a commentator. I think, I think, I think he's going to do something on t- with TV immediately. He about wants that, to be right? an actor. He wants to, he wants to do a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know what really he wants to do, but I mean, he definitely has the personality to to fit in on any of these morning uh, pregame shows, right? I mean. Oh, easily, easily. Yeah. I'm calling it now. I can see Gronkowski in Space Jam 2. It just seems like a, a nice... No, that's right. LeBron, LeBron already has that last have plenty of time to practice his lines. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Mm. Good, good, that's... good thing he went to L.A. Savior. <laughs> well, the, team's, the team was terrible. But, uh, um, I imagine how bad they would have been without him. Mm. <laughs> It is funny that they got bounced from the playoffs. We're going to diverge to basketball for a second. I, part of me still believed, like, at Christmas when they were god-awful, that he was going to manage to get that ace spot and, and pull off, like, a semi-winning record. But They're bad, too. They look bad. Speaking of basketball, I know we don't talk much about basketball. Did you guys see the injury? Nope. Um, and I don't plan on it. Oh, no, I don't want to watch the video. I mean, I read yeah, it. Oh, dude. I'm not watching it. It's brutal. It's, it's really, really bad. It was, it, was, it, was only, it was only Nurkic's ankle, though, right? It was an ankle injury. No, it was, it was mid-shin. Oh, his shin. So, so what, was it right. as bad as that guy in the NCAA tournament like five no, or six years no, ago? No, the guy in the NCAA, the bone legitimately came right. in. Can you see yeah, I didn't, I, didn't was, see, I didn't watch that one either. This was a compound fracture. <laughs> it was a, but, like, he went up for the rebound, and when he came down, his leg just snapped. Ooh. Like, snapped. Um, That's a shame. Yeah, it was, it was not – not pretty. 
<laughs> but you're loving it because I can see you're smiling. <laughs> there's, you know, there's always that little bit of everybody that wants to see it. And you yeah, know, yeah. You watch it once and then you kind of say, all right, but then you have to watch it again to make sure that you saw what you watched. Right. I watched it probably three times today. <laughs> and, um, I do like the car accident. I like it. the car accident videos, but generally those people hop out of the car after, so uh, they're not injured. You know where it's probably going to be shown on? It's probably all over Barstool Sports, I bet. No, that's where I think I saw it on Barstool. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They got a high, high caliber of reporting. So. At, least, at least they can claim that it happened during a sporting event. So I, I, you right. Know, business it wasn't just, it was, business plan works. Yeah. Well, I would have expected if that didn't happen, maybe they would have had like a video of Rob Gronkowski's dog farting to signal right. the Right. All set it. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I'm not, I don't plan on watching that video. I'm all set. So, okay, well, I'll text it to you when we're done. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, so in actual football news, the Jets re-signed one of their inside li- or linebackers, um, Brandon Copeland, which I was pretty excited about. He was a nice – he was a, a bright spot last season, and so they brought him back, which is good, and means they think they'll fit in the defense. Uh, still got a couple holes on our team to fill, but I was happy. Yeah, you know what? All the, all the signs – I mean, you listen to um, uh, Nate Burleson, right? Nate Burleson, he's on NFL Network. Yeah. I forgot what the guy's name is. I think that's his name. Is yeah, former player. Yeah. 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 Um, he was talking up the Jets yesterday morning, like big time talking up the Jets. Like they're a team that could make a run because they're you know second year quarterback. We we've, we've seen over the last few years how second year quarterbacks finally make that next step with yeah you know Trubitsky and Carson Wentz and um you know all, all these uh, Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm not saying that he's going to be in, in those those leagues. I, I think – Darnold that, doesn't even have to be on that good. I mean, because they're going to have a great defense. I, I think it's – they had a very good defense last season, but they were on the field so much that it broke a few – many games. But Their offense last year was – I mean, as we all know, right. was well, off. I was going to say, like many teams, because I, I want to get to the Panthers in a minute because I just wrote a piece about them today. It's really going to come down to the offensive line for the Jets. Like, I mean <laughs> – they got some talent now. It's going to come down to the offensive line, and that's that makes or breaks most teams in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, but I think, you know, we talked about this, you know, hypothetically throughout the season. If if the Jets were to sign Le'Veon Bell, what would that do? Would it open up the game like it did for Antonio Brown? Antonio Brown, although he was good this year, was not nearly the caliber of the player he was when Le'Veon Bell was on the field, right? So, right. you know, does that open up the game for Anunwa? Does it open up the game for Robbie Anderson? Does does Herndon finally make the step in? We had some breaking news coming across the wire here. I, I, saw, I saw it on my phone. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So, so all offensive and defensive calls and non-calls, which is very subjective, can now be challenged. It doesn't say how many times you can challenge it. I assume it's still – you know, you still have your two challenges. I don't know if that's going to change, but. So if something's it. not called, they can challenge the call to have them review it to see if it should have been a call? Yeah, basically the Saints play, the egregious miss, I think uh, it's going to be. I, I mean, I think it has to be pretty obvious. Well, but it goes to the question, how many times are you going to be able to do that? You can't, you can't challenge every pass play. Well, I think this is making every play challengeable, right? If nothing's called, you can still challenge it. No, but I think you still – yeah, but I think you may only have two opportunities as you do right now. Right, you have your, you have your set number of challenges. Yeah. But then is it everything within inside of two minutes will get challenged if it's questionable? Oh, man, that's, that's going to be tough. That's going to make – you know, they want to make these games move a little quicker. That's going to be – That's going to make the last two minutes take 45. <laughs> oh, man. Like right. basketball. Mm-hmm. Right. That's going to be a good topic of conversation. Interesting. Yeah, it's big ripple effects. I don't know. I mean, this is not the full details of how it'll work, but yeah, no, this is just a quick little headline about it. Is that the only change they they have agreed upon yet? That and the uh, the kickoff that they used last year is going to stick. Oh, okay, that worked for me. Which, which I mean, which, which was what? Well, the fact that you couldn't get a running start anymore, and everyone had to be on the line, and and it was like at the twenty five instead of the twenty, right? So it was a little yeah. bit. It was but you, had said, you had said something about uh, changing the rules to onside. So, so, I, I, so I think there was talk. I don't know if it's been um, voted on or anything, but there is talk about not doing onside kicks anymore. And I, I don't have the full details because there's no story on it. This is just hearsay. That instead of doing an onside kick, that team gets the ball and it's like fourth and 15. 
Oh, I, I read the proposal. It was yeah. similar to what the AAF is doing. Yep. With, you get the you get the shot at it. Like it's it's got to be certain certain criteria that you hit, and then you yeah, get which it. I don't know what make, it is. I, yeah. If you make the fourth and fifteen, then you get to keep going, basically. Right. Um, I mean, but in that case, all you do is you throw the ball downfield and hope you get a pass interference call. Well, you can complete fifteen yards and then have a new set of downs. So. Well, that no, that too. That's. You but know, yes, right. you you do risk the the pack a shack in the NFL. I I either. Get me a pass interference call. <laughs> Which happens all the time. Mm -hmm. or, or they say no pass interference on that. Yeah, but then you can ball the guy. You had it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be another thing. monster, fellas. Yeah, that's just more of a proposal. There's... Did we lose Phil nothing, now? I don't think there's anything in Ronald out, but it's, it's an interesting concept. Yeah. We, we had a little lag there, but we heard you. <laughs> oh, all right. Everybody's lagging. So, so when we took a... An interlude in the middle, but you were talking a little bit about um, something about the Jets and their chances. <laughs> Do oh, you have I don't know. Thoughts? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> it's it's before the draft. I mean, let's. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Well, that's why. Is, I, that's this why this I wrote a. This is when every draft, Jets fan is is optimistic, and and then they'll draft the uh, kicker in the first round with their pick. Well, well, all right. So what what about you? You texted us this morning about the. I think it was was it Todd McShay's mock draft about the Giants trading up the three. I still don't see that happening, to be quite honest. Yeah, I, I misread it. Yeah. I misread it. It's that wasn't not, what that said. Because the numbers, the numbers on the left side were actually in yellow where the draft spot was. They had just had the Giants in the third spot with the sixth pick. Yeah, he was, hi he was highlighting picks. And right. he had, that was, that was, that was falling to them at six. my bad. I, I interpreted it as they moved up the three. And then when I read it a little deeper and realized, well, the Packers are picking fourth. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's not. Well, I didn't. Yeah. I, they had they had New England immediately taking a tight end, which I think is a little bit silly, but who knows? They're going to need one. Yeah. And I guess with Jared Cook's off the market, right? New, mm -hmm. New Orleans? Jared Cook, uh, yeah, with the New Orleans. Yeah. That was, that was a real good move for them because they needed another safety blanket. I'll tell you, New Orleans, I know it's early, but New Orleans really hasn't lost anybody but Mark Ingram, and Mark Ingram really didn't do much of anything last mm -hmm. year. So, And they just replaced him with Latavius Murray. He was just the same type of player. Right. And this would be three years in a row that they'd be able to run back the same team, which is incredibly – I don't even know how you pull that off. I mean, and, I mean, they should have been in the Super Bowl last year. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if they get there this year and Breeze wins it, he's, he's retiring, right? I mean, that's, that's kind I, of – I don't know how many more years he's got left in him. Yeah. He did not play well at the end of last year. No, it, it, he showed his age. I agree. It's his offense be, it, was not good last year. It's going to be the Alvin Kamara show in 2019. Well, you can't keep him next year. Oh, I sure can. I thought you already kept him. One more year. Oh, you, you, have a, you have a set limit on number of keeper years? Yeah, two. Ah, so the way our league works is you can keep a guy at his original price for three years, and then after the third year – you can choose to keep him at his market value, whatever that happens to be. Yeah, so, ours, is, ours is just two, and he moves up two spots every year. So that way, you know, the pool is always consistently churning. Mm, okay. But Phil picked him up as a free agent. Yes. Yeah. So basically, Phil, if he keeps him this year, which um, he obviously is going to, it would only be, what, like a 10th round pick? Yeah, him and, him and, him and you can lock me in for him and Barkley. It's my oh, back. Okay. You, you're still snaking the drafts. I see. I see. Yes. I know, I know. You love the auction, but I, we can't do auctions because people live all over the country now. I play with most people that live on the East Coast. Well, look, well, all right. It's so a little bit of a struggle. We still manage to make it work. We usually have one viable draft time out of like 30 choices, but we, we do it. <laughs> yeah, I just, had, I just had one guy move to Arizona today. He's, oh. he's driving as we speak. So there you go. We got people all over the country. Yeah. Why, is he, why is he moving to Arizona? Just out of curiosity, not the not the just, 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 just a job. No. Now you're gonna have to keep not track there. of your time zone. Very hot. Yeah. <laughs> it is I very do. hot in the desert. Yes. Yeah. I, yes. Time zone is gonna be a factor now. But you know what? That's not my problem anymore. Well, no, I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> half the year he'll be in one, and then half the year he'll be in another. So are, 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 is your is your fantasy baseball team ready for Thursday? Yes, I think so. A couple, I, I drafted a couple guys that are inactive. They didn't, get, they didn't make their major league rosters. So <laughs> you got to figure out what to do with them. <laughs> but 
<laughs> was that, <laughs> I hope that was by design, though. I hope that's not poor planning on your part. No, I, I assume, like, Dallas Kuchel, who was great for the Astros, still doesn't have a team. I assumed he would get signed Keichel. by somebody. Dallas Keuchel. Keuchel? Really? It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a derogatory slang towards my people. <laughs> well, I don't <laughs> <laughs> no, it's how you pronounce his name. Okay, all right. I'm not, I'm you can call him whatever you want. <laughs> I assumed he would have a team because he was excellent, but he doesn't. So apparently, his demands are like uh, crazy. They just gave Jacob Degrom a five-year, one hundred thirty-seven and a half million dollar raise to, today. Yeah, um, which doesn't make any sense either. But because the I don't know still- why the Yankees don't sign him with Severino on the bench. For the first month and a half. Because he wants too much money and they already have all this money invested in everybody else. Yeah. That's never stopped them before. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's a different, I guess, different time. Yeah. So what, what was they your goal? Save, they got to save some money for Aaron Judge. They got You know, Aaron Judge yeah. is only making $600,000 this year. Yeah, it's crazy. He's going to hit 40 home runs again and 130 RBIs again, like he has the last two years. He's making $600,000. What a bargain. I agree. I'm a- it's that, that's why they have I a wish. I was making six hundred thousand dollars, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be a bargain, would you? Know? <laughs> no, I would be well overpaid. <laughs> well, what was what was that piece you wrote on the uh, Carolina there? Okay, so we're kind of like we're, we're we're charging through the league, right? Team by team, going from the Super Bowl champions on down, and we're at the Panthers, and they have legitimately gone from double digit wins to losing season every other year for the last six years. So. If they keep following their pattern, they're in line for a double-digit win season this year. But do we believe in the Panthers that much? I mean, they, they have a very good defense, and they return most of it. They, they've spent a lot of money on their defensive line. That was the crux of this. And they've spent a lot of money on their offensive line. They have spent zero like, money on running back, wide receiver, skill positions. So The only problem is Cam Newton can't throw the ball anymore. I, yeah, so, like, he needs some help. Like, and they, only, they don't have any backup from McCaffrey. This runs through Christian McCaffrey. But they, they, got no, they have no depth behind him, so they got no insurance behind him, which is risky. And so my brother, my brother made the point that um, they're still con- doing the Dave Gettleman philosophy of line, 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 invest in your line, don't spend on other positions, which I th- think is interesting. And I can't decide if it's worked for Rivera and Newton because they go every other year. It, it's it's – the pattern is uncanny, and it makes zero sense. Um, but I don't see, like we said, we don't see New Orleans falling off. So I believe in the pattern, but I don't believe in the Panthers. That was kind of the crux of, crux of my take. I don't know, you know what the, I don't think of that. The funny thing is that they, they do have, like, some legitimate playmakers on their team, both on offense and defense. They just can't get their act together. I wonder if Juan Rivera's act is starting to wear a little thin and, and people are really starting to get – you know, I've, I have never – been a fan of Cam Newton ever. Yeah. Um, I just I, – I don't like him. I don't like his game. I don't like his attitude. I just – there's I, there's nothing about him that I like. Um, it, it – so I, I, I don't know if we're starting to see the, the decline over there, but – Yeah. They just gave him a bunch of money too a couple of years ago. So, I mean, they're – I mean, I mean, you can cut him. I mean, it's football. I mean, if you cut him, he, there's no guarantee for anything. So – Well, they, they – they only have one re- receiver returning, and he's a sophomore. So, like, they lost their other receiver, and they, I think Jabril the Peppers just retired, so they lost the, the veteran on defense, too. So, And Luke Keekley is, like, one concussion away from just never walking again. Yeah. yeah. They're just, there's something always missing with them. I feel like even when they were winning 10 games, 11 games, something's always felt like it was missing. They had the one brilliant 15-1 and one season where they went – that, I think they made it to the Super Bowl that season, and yeah. they lost. Yeah, and they and they they got smoked by uh, Denver. Yeah, yeah, and a uh, hobbled Peyton Manning who couldn't do anything. Couldn't do anything. <laughs> so, I, I know. Wasn't it last year that Carolina was like five and zero, six and zero, seven and zero, and then all of a sudden they lost like six games in a row? Yeah. They just, I mean, what happened? Well, well Newton got hurt at the end. He did get hurt. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. And he played through it. I mean, he's talented. And I think he's a decent leader, but he never – like, he's one of the quarterbacks. He never wins – I think that one season he did, but he rarely wins games on his own. Like, and most players can't. I feel like 
Tom Brady always seems to be able to, no matter who's on the field, he seems to find a way to win the game for his team. Most quarterbacks can't do it. And I, I'm just worried that Carolina, they can't, they're not better than New Orleans. I mean, they should be better than Atlanta, but who knows? It's just, when, Newton's window's closing, basically. Well, he's been in the league how many years now? This, ooh, six. This will be his ninth season. Already? Yeah. Wow. They had the sixth back and forth, and then the first two were losing seasons for him. So. Wow. wow. Yeah. Jeez. So what do you guys think about the, the season opening with the Bears and Packers on Thursday Night Football instead of the, instead of the Patriots? I mean, they're doing it because it's the NFL's 100th season. It's the oldest rivalry in the sport. So oh, okay. it makes sense. Yeah, because the Super Bowl champions normally open the year. Right. Who do you think the Patriots are going to open against? I, I, I would bet anything it's going to be the Browns. I would bet my house. <laughs> that's, that's, what the, that's what the noise is around the league. But um, I guess they do. It, it has to be. It absolutely has to be the Browns. Why? 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 The Browns the Browns ratings. Browns. Ratings. It's all about ratings. But I don't want to watch the Browns. <laughs> yeah, but you're, they're gonna, they're, they're, the NFL is going to shove them down your throats for the next year. If they play the Browns, they're going to beat the Browns 35-7, to 7, and it's going to be a joke. Like, I, just, I know that everyone's up on the Browns, but that hype machine is too big for that team to handle. They need a little – well, I, I'm blanking on the word, but they need to be humbled before they can win, in my opinion, because everyone's crowning them, and they haven't even had a winning season yet. Well, they went seven, eight, and one last year, and they and they blew some games. Yeah, but they, they should have lost. They could've, I mean, they could have easily won nine or ten games last year, easily. But they also could have easily only won five. I mean, the Jets should have beat them. They gave them the game back. The Pittsburgh yeah. game where the guy missed the field goal. That that's another one. The couple. I mean. Yeah. The last game of the year where he where Mayfield got intercepted when he was driving the ball down the field. Um, they were in field goal range. That would have only tied, but they went for it because they needed to win. I'm not saying that they didn't look good after Hugh Jackson left. I'm just saying they're – so I wrote about the Browns, I guess, the other day. I, I think Baker Mayfield looks great, and I think he's a great quarterback. One season is too small a sample size. There have been so many quarterbacks that have had great rookie years and have either – just play or injury falling on their face year two. And there's a lot of guys that have a tough rookie year and then they excel year two and three. So I haven't seen any consistency out of Mayfield. I think he did great. No one saw him coming last year, but it took the Jets complete collapse for him to win that game. I mean, they gave it to him. I wasn't, I wasn't, I mean, it was one of his earlier games. I get it. I, I need well, to, it was, it I was need, his first game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bud called it. I remember, I remember watching that game. Bud called it. Mayfield came in. He said, game's over. So what are you talking about, Bud? The Jets are up whatever they were at the time. He's like, you watch. And sure enough. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't surprised from the outcome. I'm just saying I need to see, I need to see it from him before I'm going to believe that he can pull it together. And <sighs> Cleveland has just found a way to lose so many years in a row. Weapons. He's got some weapons now. Yeah. You know it's coming. Unfortunately, the schedule doesn't come out for another you know, three or four weeks, and that'll be a fun discussion when we when that comes out but it's I, I, you don't I, think it'll be patriots jets on <laughs> no it's gonna no, be so it's gonna be... open up patriots i'm just jets. i'm just kidding they, they always they always give the jets and the patriots like the last week because the patriots are already done they've already clinched it and it's just like they're sweeping the crap underneath the rug. <laughs> <laughs> let's just get the season over with let's give them the jets the week 17 maybe maybe, maybe they'll all. throw the jets a bone because they see darnell coming and they'll They'll give them Miami the last week of the season so they can get a win to sneak in the playoffs. <laughs> no. who, did, who did Miami just – oh, Fitzpatrick, right? It was Fitzpatrick, I think, that signed in Miami. Fitzmag Fitzpatrick is down in uh, yeah. Miami now. Oh, then he's going to knock him out of the playoffs after he got knocked out of the playoffs by his Buffalo. No yeah. Fitz. But if you think about it logically, who are the – who are the – Sunday Night Football, it's the first game of the year. Who are the oh. big who, – who do you, you think is going to generate the most eyeballs on TV? Oh, 100% the Browns. Well, yeah, it would have been the Steelers, but now that they lost Bell and Brown, it's, it's not quite the same rivalry. Yeah, but the Steelers have a big following. But the Browns are – the Browns are, are, are the – I hate – it's crazy to say, but they're like the it team right now, right? So – I mean, they also play the NFC East, right? It's the AFC North and NFC East. So, I mean. It won't be the Giants. No, no. But Cowboys would be big. Eagles Wait, hold on. Actually, you know what? Let me look. Let me. You know, we keep. We, I'm making all these predictions. 
I, I don't even know if they play the Browns this year, to be quite honest. Well, no, they, they do. No, they do. I looked at the Jets schedule the other day, so they played the North and the, the yeah. Right. Are you sure? Yeah, the Jets got to play the NFC East and the AFC North. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. oh, oh hey, there you go. Okay, so, you're so right. So I read. I was going to say, that, that to me, now, you're supposed to have a bad, uh, an easy schedule as a bad team, right? The Jets did not have that last year. But no, they had a very hard schedule last yeah. year. Yeah, but looking ahead – I don't. I, I feel like the AFC North and NFC East both look like the weak one of the some of the weaker divisions because there's nobody that's like definitely above the rest. Like I mean, Cleveland's looking above the rest in the North, but everybody in the East is kind of like this to me. Now I mean, now far. listen, the Eagles. We don't know what the Eagles are. Yeah, and I think it's pretty safe to assume that the Giants are going to be pretty bad. And I think it's going to be safe to assume that the Redskins are going to be pretty bad. Okay. Well, the Cowboys are always slightly above average, but yeah, the Cowboys will, the Cowboys will be okay. And Philadelphia uh, had no defense last year after having a Super Bowl winning defense, so I guess we'll see what they can. They're going to get Carson Wentz back, and hopefully he's healthy for him. And they got Deshaun Jackson back, so that's a deep threat. And you know, that'll, that'll be a tough game for the Jets. Um, yeah, the North right, well, Giants are going to surprise people. You watch. Okay. Very surprised people, mostly their fans. <laughs> They're going to surprise people by drafting a, uh, you know, outside linebacker with a six pick. I saw I saw one draft, one mock draft where they're going to draft to um, what's what's that guy's name? Locke. I forget where he's out of. They're not even gonna draft Haskins, but I don't, you know, Duke? the quarterback from Duke. Yeah. Come on, in the second round. No, at number six. No. That's why. I'm telling you what I saw. I'm not saying that's what's so, going to happen. So that, that, person, that person doesn't know what they're talking about. If Gettleman sticks with his philosophy, he'll go offensive or defensive lineman. <laughs> the, real, the real important question is that the Giants obviously have to play the Jets this year, and the Jets are the home team. Yes. Right. So We'll be there. So, Dan, are you coming? Yes, he is. To Ooh, New Jersey and spending the night with us and then going to the game. It's right down the street from the airport. We can just – okay. We can so, literally get you an Uber to Newark. <laughs> I will make a caveat. It truly depends when the game is played. My, I will cross my fingers and hope if it's right near the holidays, I'm there in a heartbeat. But I have some trips planned in the fall, and so it may, they may overlap. But um, I, I have stuff going on on Sundays too, but I have to work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the day off. It's a tradition, man. Yeah, but Dan uh, has to fly across the country, though. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> um, you get one of those, those planes that crash. They're, the flights are cheap on those now. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see when the game falls. Like I said, I got some trips. I got, I got some trips booked. So. I think the I think the last three times that we've gone, the last three it years, in December. It's always been in December. I, I think your cat's trying to get out the window. Is trying to get out of your house. <laughs> He's trying to escape. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we went on Christmas Eve one year, and then it was early December last year, and then the time before that was like so, it's always in December. Yeah, so that would December would kind of make it great because I'll be that that would that would work out nicely. I ideally, I, so. ideally, we want it in September where it's going to be eighty degrees and we don't have to freeze our asses off. But that, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in September. No. I know, I know. I hope it doesn't happen in September because September might actually be more difficult for me to get off. Uh, it's October or November would be obviously ideal. You just have to call in sick. Yeah. My boss watches these. So <laughs> you're not going to be on TV unless you go streaking. And well, no, they don't even show that chances, anymore. Chances are our tickets are going to be way up top. So yeah. Um, yeah. There's, there's no way I'm getting down to the field anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I just for fun, I looked today and it said mid to late, late April. So we got a few more weeks to, to, oh, to announce it. Okay. To they announce that, but. You know, there'll be a whole two-hour ESPN special on that. Yeah, those are always fun, though. Oh, yeah. on, on the schedule release? <laughs> yeah, schedule release. Do you guys watch that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just oh, okay. I asked for I criticized. Not, it's, not it's, all of us can enjoy the, the beach and the sun and the yoga on the beach. And, no. <laughs> Con, Con, Con Calvert used to say that all the time, that sports don't do well in Miami because that people have better things to do. And it's sim. It's true of it's true of SoCal as well. I don't. I can't. I can't deny it. He used to say that like every episode I would watch his, when I watch his radio show. <laughs> but well, what are your final thoughts? There weren't many other signings this week. 
I'm trying to think of anybody else that actually joined a team. Not much. Mm-hmm. Oakland can stay in the Coliseum. Not that I'm surprised. So, did, yeah. so did you did you read? Speaking of them, did you read that they have a clause in their contract that if the stadium is not ready by 2020, they can stay at the Coliseum for another year? Yeah, I did. I saw that. That's I, insane. That thing's a dump. <laughs> you know how much they're paying to rent it because they balked at the first contract that Oakland presented to them. Now it's like double. It is a ridiculous amount to play there. Well, they had no no other choice because I know I think they had asked the um. They'd ask the 49ers if they can share the field, and the 49ers flat out told them, no, go yeah. sit on it and later. So they really had no other choice. They were, they were thinking about going to San Diego and playing football too. Yeah. Well, and I think they have to pay not just to rent the building. I think they have to pay for the parking for the people to come to the games on top of it. It's something silly. Like they are going to spend so much. Well, yeah, I mean, they're crow and play there for another couple of years. Well, at least they have Antonio Brown, so maybe people will actually come out and watch him. Yeah. Well, people will always go watch football, Phil. Yeah. I when mean, I, very, very rarely do you see empty stadiums unless they were the Browns or the Jets when they were really bad. And you I don't people know, go to football games. I don't know why they didn't come to L.A. because there are a ton of Raiders fans in Los Angeles from when they used to be here. So, like, San Diego would have been a smooth move. I, I mean, I'm shocked that they didn't. But you got the Chargers now. I mean, well, we only got the Chargers because Oakland turned them, seats. We only got the Chargers because Oakland turned them down, like to to join the Rams in the new stadium. So I was just I was surprised by that move. I don't know, it surprised me. I don't know. I just I just thought that that was weird that they they want to get out so badly and so badly, and then yep. nobody else wants to give them anything, so they have to like <laughs> beg to come back. <laughs> and and if we know anything about Vegas, it probably won't be done in time. <laughs> Which is weird because there's no rainy days in Vegas. You can work on that stadium 365 days a year to get it ready. Yeah. And you yeah. could, I mean, listen, they built that ice arena. They built that hockey arena in like a year. Hmm. Well, the, the, the stadium here is opening not this season, but next season also. Yeah, there were pictures on Instagram of it the other day. It is going to be beautiful. It's coming along quick. <laughs> we're coming out there in 2021. We're going to come see this thing. You got to. It's, it's going to be something. All right, that's for sure. <laughs> So, yeah, other than that, there's not, not too much going on. I don't not, not, not too much left. March Madness wasn't quite so mad this year. That's what we got on the sports docket this week besides the start of baseball. So Yeah, ne- next, week, beat UCF. next week when we, we, when we reconvene, we can compare brackets because uh, I may or may not have a chance after this weekend. We'll see. There's okay. still a lot more games left. So well, Yeah, I went heavy chalk, so I got a lot of teams still in the running. We'll see how – we'll compare next week. Is it good? There's, there's, only, there's only one non-top four seed left, and that's hmm. – what? Or, no, there's a five seed in there also. But so there's two. Oh, okay, but everybody else is one, twos, threes, or fours, right? Yeah. Yep. yep it's, so crazy. it's basically chalk all, all, all the way. Chalk mm-hmm. chalk. Didn't that every 12 seed win, though, which was kind of silly? Or I guess Did one, it? five, one, but. Uh, I'll have to look. Yeah. But. Anyways, we'll talk again next week. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching Buzz Talk. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Share. Woo.